Hello, everyone. Bob Thibodeau here, and I've been looking so forward to today uh, as we kick off this year because I spent the last, oh, a good a good month, perhaps six weeks, just taking a break from the hectic year past because like our ministry grew, our trainings grew. Uh, just to give you a quick synopsis, normally I'll do 110 to 120 interviews in a year. I did 146 interviews last year. And I said, okay, well, that's pretty good, right? Well, break it down. That's 146 interviews. If you knock out the weekends, okay, so instead of 365 days, you know, you knock those out, knock out some holidays, knock out days where I had, you know, doctor's appointments or running around doing other stuff. You know, it comes down to about three days a week that I was scheduled to work. We'll put it like that. And I had 146 interviews in that time frame, And, you know, that was not unusual for me to be bouncing around like a ball and, you know, and a, a, just a, just a ping pong ball in a box because I go from interview to training to appointments back in time. You know, my whole schedule revolved around being here on this computer. And it was not unusual for me because I had the radio station. I still have trainings that I'm putting together, trainings I'm attending, the interviews that I have to prep for and all of that. It was not unusual for me to spend 10 and 12 hours a day in front of this computer. And by Thanksgiving time, I was getting pretty well burned out. And I, Lord, I just need to get this under control. So I decided I was just going to take a break. And that's where you, you know, people were contacting me. Hey, I was trying to book an interview and the schedule is open till January. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> you know, because I just had to take a break. And I spent that time praying about what to do. And then, you know, with Sean's help and, uh, you know, just the Lord's leading, I realized I need to put systems into place that would take care of 75% of the work anyway. And that's what we've been implementing. And man, it has been great. These systems that I now have in place have freed up my time. Even though, you know, we're, we're brand new into the new year, I've already seen the difference uh, because I implemented them back in December. And the systems I'm sharing with you, this is just going to be a general overview. Okay. I'm not going to go into specifics on any one particular topic today. I just want to share with you where I'm coming from in 2024, because if the Lord did this for me, I know he can do it for you. And I just want to give you the overview today. Uh, my goal is about every three weeks or so to focus on one aspect of this and do a deep dive into it. And I'll be sharing that as well as we go along throughout the year. But uh, today is just a general overview. But I want to introduce to you someone who more or less twisted my arm, wrestled me to the ground, twisted my arm, and said, you need to get this under control. And that's Sean Mize. And Sean, uh, I just want to welcome you to the the training today. And I do appreciate all that you've done for me, uh, especially getting me focused this past year because I, I needed it. And I'm just going to give you a few minutes here before I get started. All right. Well, cool. You make me sound like a, a strong man or strong armor or something like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, obviously sometimes that's what it takes for us to be able to get the focus that we need. You know, I'll, I'll tell you, when I look at what you've accomplished over the last few years, uh, with the podcasting and just the sheer number of, of, of events that you've held, you know, we can formularize that as much as we want and say, Hey, this is what you do. But at the end of the day, we know every one of those uh, takes time. And, you know, the first year that you do something big, and I think a lot of entrepreneurs fall into this trap, the first year that you do something big, you're kind of running on cortisol and adrenaline and motivation and excitement and, and uh, you're able to muscle through everything. But the second year and the third year, in order to have the same results, you, you've got to be able to step back and let either software or or other people or systems be able to do that work. And so it's been really interesting to me, even before, you know, you talk about this huge 
thing that you've done these last six weeks in terms of systematizing. And I'm really excited about seeing what you've done because there's some parts in my business that aren't systematized the way that they, they should be. And if I can now come to you and say, look, you, you've met, you've figured this piece out. Can you teach me? I'm here as a student with, with everybody else, but I just I want to share one thing that's really, really interesting to me because I've seen behind your business over the course of the last few years, I've kind of seen around and, and uh, it's always amazed me how much productivity that you're able to have around these podcasts as a one man show. And of course, we know you're not really a one man show. You've got you've got these these systems, you've got these people behind you that are doing a lot of the, the things that that really would would hold you back. They allow you to be leveraged. And so, you know what? I want to just speak to everybody else here. You may not know me. But I've I known Bob for a long time and seen him kind of behind the scenes and seen what he's doing. And what he what I I believe that what he's doing right now with these systems that have shaved 75% of the workload off is is next generation um for Bob. But I want you to know personally that going back the last two or three years, one of the ways that he's been able to be so productive is because he has outsourced, whether it's VAs, and I don't know how much he'll explain today, but whether it's VAs or it's it's software, it's people that are doing so many of the things. So you may not talk about that, but it's been in place for a really, it's been in place for a long time. And I feel like Bob understands this sort of inside and out. And now you've got this, this kind of this second wind. So really excited about hearing this, Bob, and I'm sure, I'm sure everybody else is, they wouldn't be here. Amen. Well, Let's jump into it. Uh, well, I start with is you have to understand your own strengths and passions. And, you know, you start with the fundamental question. What are you truly passionate about? You heard Dr. Ruling here a few minutes before we got started. Is this health and nutrition? I've interviewed him a dozen times on our podcast. And he, that's Dr. Ruling. That's, oh, he's awesome in that area. He has, he has done the deep dive on that research, I guess you could say, as well as prophecy and things like that. But, you know, you have to find out what it is you are truly passionate about. And then having a passion for a subject, that's vital. But for a successful business practice, it, it needs to align with what, what the market is really needing. Okay, you have to ask yourself some questions, you know, what problems or challenges are people in your area of interest facing? What are the gaps in the market that you may be able to fill? And, and how can your teaching or your products or your services bring a unique value set or a new perspective to potential learners? Okay. So, you know, things to consider when you're going through this process is, you know, how you can structure your teachings to allow for automated delivery, like Sean was talking about. Uh, you know, like online courses to webinars and signups to webinars like you all went through. Uh, what scalable aspects like digital products or a subscription model can you incorporate into your business? You know, how can your teachings be adapted to different formats and reach a wider audience? You know, the goal is to create a teaching platform that will grow and thrive with minimal or even no daily input from you other than maybe just managing a couple of emails or something like that. So the very first step really is identifying what you're going to teach and then marrying your passions and your strengths with what your market needs. And while ensuring that it fits into a simple, almost automated business model. And what do I mean by that? Well, first of all, there's no such thing as a, like a self running system. Okay. Because as soon as you set it up, something's going to, break on it or something will need to change and you got to go back and update it. So that being said, there are some things that you can do to simplify the process and keep your actual time attending to the detail and time consuming tasks to a minimum. So the very, very first thing you need to do, and only you can do this is to break down your entire system into a process. So how do you do that? Step-by-step -step breakdown of your process. Well, I recommend you use a spreadsheet. Okay, now, I've used this extensively, and Sean's the one who taught me about it, gosh, five, six years ago. And as soon as I seen this, that was 
a million dollar training to me because I have used it ever since in everything I do. And you'll be amazed at the clarity it can give you. Okay. In fact, I got, I actually did a video training and share it with my clients on podcast training about how to use it. It's called my 10 by 10 matrix. Okay. And I'm just going to go over here and share the screen for a second. Uh, let me get over here. Share screen. There we go. And Are you seeing this yet, or am I on still the main screen? Let's try it again. Share screen over here. There we go. Okay. Yep. There we go. All right. So it's just a 10 by 10 matrix. In this example, let's say you're going to do a training on, you know, planting a garden. Okay. Well, what kind of garden? You got vegetable gardens, flower gardens, shrubs, fruit gardens, mulch, you know, all this stuff that has to go into a garden. Uh, so what you do is you just list across the top the different types of things you're going to teach on. That's all it is. You know, so here we got how to do a vegetable garden, how to do a flower garden, how to do shrubs, how to do fruits, mulch, and all that. And then underneath each one of these things, you simply put different items in there, like under vegetables, cucumbers, potatoes, peppers, vegetable, you know, all that. Flowers, roses, tulips, violets, cactus. Yeah, cactus is a flower, okay? Uh, shrubs, flowering shrubs, non-flowering shrubs, fruit, tomatoes are considered a fruit, not a vegetable. Strawberries, blueberries, mulch, you know, you got compost, natural wood, you got grass mulch, all that. So you can teach on any one of these subjects, okay, in your teaching. And what I do as, and let me, I'm going to pull up one more here real quick, just to show you that I do use this. It'll pop open here real quick without uh, screwing up the zoom. There we go. This is a podcast training that I do. So over here, you see, what are you teaching? Put it in writing, make videos, develop a funnel. So, and underneath, I have all these different things, coaching, sales, marketing, put it in writing, break it down step-by-step, step, consolidate it. This, These are the things I teach on, okay? So when over here on workshops, you see the same thing. I'm doing that. And what I do is when I teach on a subject, I highlight it. So that means I've already taught on that particular thing. So over here on our main spreadsheet that we're doing right now let's say i'm teaching on how to plant proper way to plant and nurture and grow cucumbers when you get done just highlight it that way or maybe put a, a different color in here so that you can come back later let's say you're you're teaching on one of these things each week first week first week of the month is vegetable garden second week the flower garden third week of the month shrubs and so next month you come back and say, okay, what do I need to teach on? Oh, okay. I've already taught on cucumbers, so I can teach on potato gardening today. And after you teach on that, just make sure you highlight it. And that's what you've seen in that previous screenshot that I or screen that I showed you on my podcast teaching. As I go through, I highlight each subject so that I know I've already taught on that. Why is that important? Because you don't want to go back and teach on the same thing because you forgot you taught on it six weeks ago. Okay. You always want to have something new for your clientele. Okay. So that in a nutshell is how it works. You just put, I call it, if you had 10 rows across the top here and 10 items down here, you got 100 teaching topics that you can teach on. That means you can teach on one every week for almost two years. So you can teach on, you know, two a week for a year, but you can lay that out. If you do it, just this simple, just a simple format. You'll have all of your teaching topics for an entire year finished in probably half an hour, maybe an hour, if you really put a lot of thought into it. You can have everything you're going to teach now ready to go as far as what you're, what you're going to teach on in an hour's worth of time for the entire year. And you can do the same thing with books. I've taught People how to use that for their books, you know, chapter one, chapter two, so you know, or the topic or whatever it's going to be. You can I've used this in creating the ebooks and things like that, that that you've seen. That's what I use for creating my ebooks. So I know exactly what I'm going to talk about in each section. And by doing that, that has eliminated a lot of the 
the stress about what am I going to talk about? What am I going to teach about? Today's training, same thing. Everything I'm talking about today first started as a 10 by 10 matrix. So this is what I'm talking about as far as beginning the process of systemizing. And it works if you're putting together a training program, a video training. Like I said, I use it in my podcast training. And it, it just helps me to make sure that I cover all of the required topics over the course of the training. But like I said, you can use it to lay out the details of whatever it is you bring in your business model. That way, you know you're covering each and every step. Because if you just do it off of the top of your head, you may forget something. And then it doesn't work the way that your clients think they should think it should work, but you need to elaborate on each step, provide detailed instructions by doing this just one time. You'll always have it. I, you see, I just pulled up that second, uh, the spreadsheet there just with a click of the mouse. Boom. I could go off and use that and go straight off into a podcast training session right now because I've done it the one time. And it's there for me to use over and over and over again. If someone, I'm talking to someone on a Zoom call and they have a question, well, what kind? how do I know what kind of microphone I need? I, I was on a call last week. And I said, what do I need to start? I clicked on that spreadsheet, showed us in. I teach on start with what you have, how to use your cell phone to start your own podcast. And that's where we started at. So it's always going to be available. You can refer to it quickly once you lay it out that first time. Okay, but once you have everything laid out, be sure to test your own instructions. Follow your own outline. You know how to do it, but you need to go straight through the matrix one block at a time to make sure you've got everything covered and to test your instructions. Once you've gone through all the steps, testing them, making sure you've covered everything. And it's even better if you have someone else who's not familiar with the process to go through the matrix themselves and test it for you. This will prove whether or not you've explained everything in enough detail so a novice can follow your instructions. Because if they come back saying, I didn't understand this, how do I do that again? You may have to go through and adjust your training in that particular block so you can cover those aspects. Because if they got questions, I can guarantee you six months down the road, somebody else is going to have a question too. Okay. Once that's completed and you had at least one, but preferably two or three people follow your training successfully with no input from you, they achieve the results with no input from you, just using that training, then you can move on to the next level, which is creating a checklist or a workbook that you can then provide this information in. That's why I told you I use these checklist or the spreadsheets to create my, my workbooks, my eBooks. I mean, you can even offer it as part of a course. You can sell it as a standalone offer and start generating income from it. But you need to take the matrix and put it all down in writing. And you can do that prior to having your testers check out every step of the process. But now at this point, you want to make it into an offer. You need to make this in a proper format, make it look good so that you can sell it or provide it as a bonus to whatever it is you're doing and make a video. After diligently documenting your process, the next exciting step is to bring it to life through a video tutorial. I mean, this isn't just about showing. It's about teaching in a way that empowers your clients, your viewers, to replicate the process on their own. A step-by-step -step demonstration as you go through your matrix on video, showing them how to do it, is a great way of doing that because you begin with a new or empty project then methodically work through each step. Just as you just you outline in the matrix or in your checklist, your PDF, your book, whatever, so that they come to the final outcome and you conclude it by showing them the completed project. I mean, this gives your viewers a clear idea of what they can achieve by following your steps. And if you run into a problem along the way, Sean taught, taught this one all the time. He'll run into, you know, something doesn't, Oh, click that button. That didn't work. Let me go see why <laughs> and then fix it right there on the screen. Because if you run into the problem, they're going to run into the problem too. And now they see that, you know, oh, okay, that's how I got to take care of this. And, you know, when I do the podcast, I've got a, a, a video that I created. Watch me create a podcast in one city. And I start I didn't even have a name for a podcast, and I just walked them through this matrix step-by-step step from getting a domain name, 
creating the name of the podcast, creating the domain name, uh, begin processing the entire process step by step. It took like less than an hour. We had this podcast created. I had three episodes created because I just did a quick video, like a 30 second video online uh, and save the recording. Use that as the recording to load into the podcast. So I had the name, the podcast, the, the domain name, the videos or the, the audio recordings loaded to the podcast, had the podcast site, had everything set up. Within an hour, I had a published podcast and it was on iTunes. Okay. So I could do it in a whole hour just following that matrix concept. Okay. That's how important that matrix is. Okay. Now, when you're doing a video, Try and find a willing volunteer, send them the video, ask them to create their own system following your instructions. And if they're able to do that successfully, you're golden. All right. If they have an issue or two that requires your input, go back, create, consider adding a step or two to the, the training or your checklist or your book or whatever it is to make sure it can be done by a novice who's following along. Okay. Once that is finished, now you have a product a product that you can give away as part of bonuses or you want to sell on its own. And that's the next step in this process is creating the sales and delivery funnel. You know, the, that's an important part of if we, you're going to try to deliver it. In fact, it's probably the most important, important aspect of your business model, because if you got something you can't deliver, it doesn't do anybody any good, you or them. So structuring your funnel, you know, are you going to offer, the checklist as your entry point. Some of you have seen that checklist that I was, uh, was providing. You know, maybe offer an ebook as an entry point and the checklist as a bonus. Remember, this checklist that you just created allows them to do whatever it is you're telling them that you can teach them to do. And that works well. Then offer the video for a small upgrade charge to generate some income just to get people used to clicking in your system. You, know, you may decide not to offer the entire process at one time. Uh, Fact is, many people will get overwhelmed and quit if they feel the 77 step process is too much, especially if you create a short video training for each step. I've had that happen to me. Oh, glory to God. I purchased when I was first started this podcast venture, I purchased an entire 97 video training course. It claimed to answer every question you could have in starting and setting up your own podcast. Each video is about 30 minutes long. And there's almost 100 of them. How many videos do you think I went through before I got burned out? Probably about 10, right? It was just so overwhelming. And I believe in over-delivery, but... That, that that one just blew me away, okay? By the way, if you do have that type of program or process with that many steps, it's vital that you do create a video for each step just so your clients can see what you're doing and what they'll need to replicate the desired results of each step and what it'll look like. But if it's that complicated where it's going to take, you know, more than 10 videos, in this case it was 97, especially if each step is built upon the one preceding it, you need to plan on dripping the content out to your clients. Don't overwhelm them with an email that says, click this link, get all 77 videos or 97 videos or whatever it is. More like, make it more like, click this link, get immediate access to the three videos in step one and do it like that. That way, you know, they have a way to control when they receive the videos for step two. You just tell them something to the effect, work on stage one this week. Next week, I'll send you the two videos for step two. And then you continue going, just drip feeding that content. For some courses, especially those that are complex or require practice, a drip feed approach is particularly effective for step-by-step -step systems. But you also have to provide them the resources they need. Okay, Ensure that each part of your funnel is comprehensive, and self-sufficient. If a video tutorial is part of a stage, consider including a company audio file or a transcript for those who prefer different learning formats. Not everybody learns watching videos. You know, I'm I'm a combination. I like watching the video so I see what it's supposed to look like, but then I want to get hands-on and do it. Okay. So every person learns differently. 
if a particular step involves practical application, include examples or case studies to illustrate it more clearly. Matter of fact, let me just draw your uh, quick whiteboard thing here on, on systems. Let's try that. Uh, usually you can start for it to load. There we go. Put this. And let's say you're going to just start with an email to generate interest. Okay. And the email comes along, they click it, and it takes them to an information page. All right. Kind of like what you guys did going through here. They're interested in what you have to say. So the next step would be the sales page. Right there, something like that. From the sales page, you have to deliver the product. So then it's a delivery. Now you have their information. You can put them back into another email campaign for maybe the different a different subject along the same topic, though. Okay. Uh, and then from here, again, it would lead back up to the sales page for that particular topic. Not in this one system. I'm just saving time from not drawing it all out. But by doing that, you're establishing your system. This is a system. So you don't have to create something new. And if I showed you my email delivery account, I have so many email lists right now. Yesterday, I told my VA, go in and organize my list. And limit, I want to, there, there's probably 30 different lists in my email thing. And I said, I want to get it down to six. Make it happen. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> when I look at, that's why some of you are getting multiple emails from me. Because I say, send this, bam, if you're on 12 lists, you get 12 emails. And that's overwhelm. Okay. I don't like doing that. So my VA, they're working on that this week because I want to get it down where, you know, you're just going to be on one list and all that. But that's what this is going to do. Like I say, if you take this one, if, if you didn't, if that confused you, what I just did, come over here. So you take them to the next information page and then to the next sales page and so on and so on. I see you got your hand up, Sean. Go ahead. No. Oh, okay. I thought, I thought you were. Yeah, must have been a mistake. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. No, this is. By the way, that now that you got me on camera, um, this is this is just absolutely phenomenal. I wish I was teaching this. You're amazing. Man, hey man, appreciate that. Uh, learn by failure. <laughs> I you hear the the saying, "Learn by experience." I learn by failure. Oh, that didn't work. What, let's make it work and, and that's that's how i learn but like i said that's that's a simple a simple system right there i'm trying to get back to where i need to be there we go. that's a simple system on using just the block step system of outlining what it is you're trying to teach that's the 10 by 10 matrix put down on a whiteboard basically okay you start here and work your way through and, that, and that's what it's all about okay so with that being said, let's see. Your goal is to provide all of the resources, all of the support materials that your clients might need to understand and apply each step with no additional help from you. Remember the old adage, a picture's worth a thousand words? Well, a video is simply a series of pictures that are streamed together. So a video must be worth 10,000 words, right? So that's what you need to look at. And perhaps the most exciting phase of evolving your simple success system business is the growth and expansion phase. This is where you can really start to scale up what you're doing. It's also the stage where you'll see the processes really start to kick in. And when you're doing that, the end result should be an increase in your income while cutting back your work hours. Praise God for that. That's that's what I was shooting for in December, okay? And that sounds awesome, right? Let me say it again. Cutting back your hours, not adding additional work. That's where I failed last year because I was growing and say, okay, now I'm going to add this. Yeah, it was adding not just to the processes, it was adding to the workload as well. And that's, that's the trap I fell into. 
And when I started, you know, way back when I started in online radio and with the podcast, I could do everything in four hours over one weekend because I just started with online radio. My first, the Lord gave me, you, you've all heard the stories. So I'm not going to go into it here of how I started. The Lord command was begin your weekly own weekly online radio program, 30 minute online radio program. And I didn't know how to do it, but I learned how. And my first program, my first radio broadcast, what they call a podcast that I didn't know what it was called back then, was a on a flip cell phone on a free website. I didn't have a website, but that's where I started getting a follow. Right. And then I ended up uh, being getting offered to go on uh, nationwide AM Christian radio. We we're on four major markets for a year. That's where I had to start learning processes. I had to learn sound quality, time management, editing files, loading servers, all of that. And then about halfway through that year, I got the letter in the mail that said, congratulations on your retirement. You're not living on half your income. And I got this big radio budget. So I knew I wasn't going to renew the budget. I was going to honor the contract, but I wasn't going to renew the, the, uh, the contract for another year. And praying about it, Lord said, now start your own radio station. And that has to be these, this, these things here. He gave me 10 items. I call it my 10 commandments for radio. Didn't know what I was doing, but now I had a little bit of background. So I kind of had an idea of how it was supposed to look. And that's where we started. And I could set up the entire radio station for a week and four hours on a Sunday afternoon. Okay. Within a year, because of new things being added to it, what I was doing, it was all day Saturday and still half a day on Sunday. And I was also still working full time during this year. This was a, uh, it was right after this when I retired, but after I retired, I expanded my operations. I mean, I got all this time now. I don't have to worry about work. So it was half a day every day, including Saturdays and Sundays. And then it continued to expand until I was working 60 hours a week on this stuff. That takes its toll on you after two, three years of doing that. And that's the reason I had to find some way to run the operation. And that's where this information started coming from, my personal experience. Amen. Remember how I started? Do you want to be the boss or the business owner? You know, that, that book by Tim Ferriss, uh, The 4-Hour Workweek, he goes into detail on that. Do you want to be the boss or the business owner? I was the boss, but I wasn't the owner. The business owned me. It could not function unless I was there. You don't want to get stuck in a growing business environment and find out you can never leave. It's kind of like, you know, the old song from the 70s, Hotel California, right? Except be, be more like you can stop working anytime you like, but you can never leave. You can take, you can stop for today. I'll see you in the morning is what it's going to be. Because that's how my life was. Oh, I, I, I got so burned out that I actually emailed my board of directors said, I quit. I quit. I'm done. And that's when they said, okay, we need to figure something. That's where the concept of hiring a VA came in just to help me a little bit. Okay. But I, that's where I was. Now this last little bit of advice is free. Okay. Social media. Use the power of social media to your advantage. Social media is a system all onto itself. Each platform has advantages and disadvantages, and it's beyond the scope of what I'm talking about today to go on into all the nuances and, and how to set up your system on social media. Truly, it is all dependent on what you're trying to accomplish. That's why I can't really address it today. If we have 50 people on the call, it'd be 50, 45, 50 different requirements for all the business models represented, right? We got six, five, six here. That's five, six different business models. Some people might have more than one, but it doesn't mean you should not use social media to promote what you're doing. You know, quite the contrary. Social media is a vital part of helping you establish and grow your simple success system business. I mean, you may already be an expert in one or more social media platforms. Use that knowledge to fast track the promotion of your business model. Once you have the initial platforms up and running the promotions of your model start to to learn and implement the other social media platforms that you're not as comfortable with 
but don't spend a lot of time on there engaging people about what they're eating for dinner or where they want, what movie they see. Use it for the business. That's the important thing. Use it only for the business. I mean, you can have your own private page or something or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. I have a social media presence, but I'm not on social media. Okay. I've got a, a system that I use where I can take my podcast episodes that are being published that day and it automatically sends them out. I do live trainings on, on Sunday morning or live sermons on Sunday morning. And that goes over five different social media platforms. So it looks like I'm on social media. My wife will come in and say, hey, did you see the picture our daughter posted? No, I don't go on Facebook. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's just that's just me. I, I I got sucked into that. One day I said, well, let me go on here and interact with people. And, all that. and I spent four hours on Facebook and accomplished zero work. And I just said, I'm not doing that anymore. I just can't. I, I can't do it. And But I found a way to use social media to, in the business model and and that's what you need to find out and again it's i have that system in place i'm not going to take the time to go into it today we'll do that on one of the trainings coming up but uh you know if you're not comfortable on any platforms or any particular platform there is a learning curve that you have to follow to be successful and not find yourself getting banned from the platform okay that can and it does happen so my advice for today is just learn the nuances of each platform. Use them according to those specifications, all right? Again, we're not going into detail here. We'll cover that on a call in the future. But now I want to briefly talk about probably one of the most essential phases in evolving from being a boss to become an owner within your simple system, uh, simple success system business. And, and some of you may be wondering what the difference is. The key to the transformation lies in delegating tasks to somebody else. Sean mentioned it at the beginning. You know, some folks will benefit from doing this from the very start. Others may implement it later once the income covers the expenses. The actual decision of when to implement delegation is up to you. Whatever works best for your situation. But when you can cut yourself out of the day-to-day, hour-to-hour customer service issues, you're on the road already to simplifying your life. I know. I Like I said, I had to learn the hard way. Remember, you want to go from being the boss. What's the boss? He's be, he's involved in everything, no matter how small, to being the owner and delegating everything that can be delegated. That frees up what? Your time. And when you free up your time, that's just so I don't even have words to describe it because you heard how much time I was locked into this computer. Now I'm, I spend, you know, I still spend six hours a day here anyway, just because it's what I do. But compared to 15 hours a day, six hours to me is like, you know, I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> so, but it's your time. If you're working, let's just say two hours a day, answering emails. If you're honest with yourself, you can look at all those emails and break them down into a couple categories. You know, there may be customer service issues, passwords that aren't working, access issues, people never receiving their products, especially for digital products and services, you know, refunds, cancellations, support requests, inquiries. If you can remove those you don't really need to be involved with, think of the time you'd save. Figure out what your time is worth. If Let's say you earn $50,000 a year and work eight hours a day for 50 weeks a year on your business, taking vacations and holidays off. That's 50 grand spread over 40 hours a week, a week times 50 weeks, which equates to 2,000 work hours. Divide that into the 50,000, find out an average of $25 an hour. So if you're spending two hours a day on emails, that's 50 bucks a day. Okay. If you could find someone, hire someone at $10 an hour to handle most of those emails for you, if it's just the two hours a day, that'd be $20 a day that you're paying them. Automatically, you're saving $30 just in your time. Now, if you apply yourself to focusing on only what makes you money, because we're talking about your business model here, which could be new products, services, writing books, whatever the case may be, you're working that extra two hours a day in that area. 
What do you think your business would look like at the end of one year if you were working 25% more on things that actually would make you income? A simple calculation would be an increase of 25% in income, an extra $12,500 a year, or in this example, $62,500 every year. That's just a simple calculation, okay? But you could do that, or you could take time off to learn a new skill, which would then raise your, let's say it raises your hourly average from $25 to $50 an hour. That'd be worth it, right? In my podcast business, you know, all you're doing in this, when you're, you're simplifying tasks, is getting rid of the tasks that are costing you money. They're a drag on you right now. Okay, In my podcast business, I was handling every single aspect. I was putting in 10, 12, 14, 16 hour days to make sure every aspect was handled correctly and things were running smoothly. When I finally broke down and hired my first virtual assistant, my productivity increased, my income increased, my freedom increased. I had more free time to spend with my wife and grandkids. My stress decreased significantly, right? Today, especially after the COVID pandemic, Virtual assistants are very popular and very affordable. I want I want to guide you through the simple basics right now of hiring the right VA, training them effectively, and setting clear guidelines to ensure that they can handle 75, 80, maybe even 90% of your routine tasks. I know Dr. Christine has VAs that she uses, has assistants and stuff, and, and this just frees you up to focus on core business activities, you know, first choosing the right VA. Well, the process of hiring a VA should be approached with care. Okay. You need to make sure the person you hire can communicate clearly and effectively in speaking and in writing, give them a test project to work on, give them a trial run, then evaluate it. Remember the cheapest option isn't always the best option. If you're looking for a balance of affordability and quality, a good VA is an investment in your business, your ministry, your efficiency, your growth. And there's multiple agencies out there. I recommend an agency, okay? Because if you go private and, you know, you got these big projects they're working on and then all of a sudden you get an email that says, you know, I, I'm, I got a better job and I'm quitting. So sorry, I'm done. What are you going to do? You're in the middle of a project. If you're working for an agency and this VA is not working out, you can get the, the supervisor and say, this VA is not working. I, I'm having a problem with this issue. I need to find somebody who can handle it. They can do that in-house. If that VA leaves, that person is going to assign you another VA. So if you hire an agency, it's a lot better all the way around. Plus, you're not paying them individually. You're paying the agency and the agency is paying them. Okay, But just remember the cheapest option is not always the best. Uh, many agencies are overseas. This provides you with a unique opportunity to get quality, a quality assistant, relatively speaking, at a great value compared to our economy. But the fees you pay are blessing them in their economy. You know, it's not unusual to get someone with a master's degree trained in English. You know, they speak English fluently and read, write, all that stuff, communicate in English, and they may be in the Philippines or India or whatever, but you're paying them $10 an hour. To you, that's great. To them, it's great because their economy, to them, $10 an hour would be like $40 an hour to us, just relatively speaking, okay? So I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on that today because it's all outside the scope of this teaching, but again, we'll have another training on this in the future. But when you reach this step, you are now making that transition to become the owner of a profitable, almost completely simple success system business model. Because now you're delegating tasks out that need to be done. You're focusing on what the important tasks are. And all those routine tasks, you're now setting aside. It's like you're running an office, except the office is online. You need someone to do something, you tell them in the office, okay, I need you to handle this. Let me know when it's done. You're back over here working on an important project. They come in and say, hey, here you go, boss. Okay, thanks. Same thing with the VA. They're going to email it to you. Take a look at this. Tell me if you need me to do anything else with it, All right? So you still need to monitor the, the work the VA is doing. You may find that you'll come to the place where you need a second VA or a third VA, perhaps one that does outreach for new clients. 
you know, another that handles the email, the delivery and all that stuff. Uh, another that handles customer service issues. You, you may even find yourself at the point where you need to hire one that manages the other VAs. Okay. And that's a good position to be in. I'm almost there. Not there yet. I'm almost there. And, and Desiree is, is going to be that one. I know it, but uh, yeah. anyway, it's going to cost money to do that. That's why you can't just jump in and do it unless the finances are there to support it, which is why I'm not going into a lot of detail on that training. That's simply beyond the scope of what we're talking about here. Today is the overview of the system. And that's a goal that you may want to establish and achieve in the future, though, but it's probably not where you're going to start at right now or probably would not be here today. You know, I have a couple of VAs that work for me right now, one handling the editing of the podcast interviews, another one's handling the outreach and, and going on social media and giving me a presence there, and discovering new clients that may be interested in doing interviews on the podcast. And uh, Alyssa is here today. Uh, she's going to be helping me with loading the podcast to the hosting site, taking that off my plate. It took me six years, folks, to realize my time was more valuable in not doing all these things. But because I did do it, I know the steps involved and I can have the, I can train them and how to do it so I don't have to now. And, and since I implemented this, my work hours, as I said before, have been cut and my output has increased. My stress levels are down a lot and my income is starting to go up. It's not where I want it to be yet, but it's starting to go up. Praise God. That's why I'm sharing this step with you at this point as well. If you can start out like this, if you can do that or implement it as soon as possible, it could help you do more with less and be a lot happier along the way. Amen. Uh, again, all these things are discovered through the old ritual of trial and error. Over the years, that's what I had to do. And that's the purpose of today's call and the training simply to share with you what I've discovered works for me and with a few people, other people I've helped all along the way as well. Okay. Sean, did you have something you wanted to add? Did I see you raise your hand? No. Okay. Well, uh, I didn't raise my hand, but uh, okay. just uh, before you close, just want to say this is maybe I'm speaking for the others that can't speak up right now, but to say this has really been very, very powerful and love the way that you've taken some some advanced concepts and just said look this is this is the way you could lay these out and do them simply and just get started here's a, the simple way to do it just like you've done it over the last six weeks yeah amen over i appreciate now. that yeah and, and going back to the testing process remember when i talked about that a few minutes ago these processes work when implemented i could have been doing this two years ago i should have been doing it two years ago i needed to do it two years ago i just waiting until the finances turn around. What I finally realized was doing the same things over and over again does not produce different results. Simple as that. You need to implement the changes in order to see the changes. Amen. Now, I promise you, I would not have any offers today. I'm not going to be pitching any products today. This was simply me sharing the simple success system business model with you. Now, I believe this system will work for just about anyone that implements it. Remember, it's not implementing what works for me, but what works for you. The basics are the same, but the individual details will be different. Even if you're a podcaster who does interviews, your version of the simple success system will develop that you develop will be different from the one I use. That's why I just wanted to share with you today what works for me to try and spur the thought processes, you could say, for, you know, to give you the framework of what I'm doing. So maybe you can develop the framework that works for you. But I do have a free resource that I'm giving away for everyone who's registered for today's training. As you know, or as you've heard, I've been doing podcast interviews for years now. This is the sixth year. And I've been interviewed hundreds of times and I've conducted pretty close to a thousand. And I'll go over a thousand interviews this year for sure. Uh, I've used podcasting to benefit the business, the ministry, becoming a recognized expert, if you will, in podcast interviews. And I put together a book, which is currently being prepped to be put on Amazon. It's not there yet. It's still in the editing processes, but it'll be there probably another month, six weeks, something like that. But I'm going to give a copy of this as an ebook to everybody watching right now. And Alyssa, I gave you the link to that. If you're on there, if you can put that into the chat, just go into chat, put it in there. Uh, she's going to put a link in there. If she can't do it, I got the link here. It's called Six Steps 
to becoming an in-demand podcast guest or host. It covers everything from crafting your unique story and finding the right podcast to perfecting your pitch, preparing for your interviews, being an excellent guest. Uh, I've also included a section on leveraging your podcast appearances to help grow your business. And Oh, she says her chat's disabled. Okay, I'll take care of it here. Chat. I go up there and grab this link. One of the things that we didn't talk about was always have a backup plan. My backup plan was I'd put the link in. <laughs> that was my backup plan. <laughs> there you go. It should be in chat. Everyone should see it now. Uh, but like I said, it covers all the different aspects of, of doing that and you know to help you grow your business. Again, this is going to be sold on Amazon, but I'm giving you the free, more or less an advanced copy of it right now. Uh, you know, Sean, do you see it in chat? Is it there? Okay, good. Okay. And, uh, you know, that's my gift to you for for today, just for joining me and sticking with me up to this point. I want to thank you for joining me today. Uh, that's the end of the presentation. If you have any questions, I'm here to try and answer them uh, before we sign off. Anybody have any questions? I'm going to unmute everybody. And uh, you can go ahead and make sure I got all that. Sean, you're done. I think everybody should be able to talk. Thank you. you have any questions? Yeah, not a problem, Dr. Ruley. I appreciate you joining us today. Good stuff. Uh, it's uh, the implementation of it that uh, boggles our minds. Yeah, and that's why I said this was just the overview today. Uh, I'll be going through and, and uh, you know, over the next several, probably the first quarter of this year, we'll be going through several trainings that talk about the actual implementation step by step. Amen. Uh, this is uh, this is Chris. Um, yeah. I uh, I don't see anything in chat. Okay. Uh, let's see. Everyone, let me put it in. Everyone. I guess I, that's probably why. See, I'm still learning the processes oh. on Zoom. How, <laughs> is it there now? It is there now? Thank you so okay, much. And yeah. this was really good. This was very helpful. Oh, I appreciate it, Dr. Christine. Looking forward to our next conversation, too. Yes. I can't seem to open it, though. Should click on it. No? Copy and paste, maybe? Maybe. I will try that. Thank you. Okay. If not, I'll put it. It'll be in an email that goes. It's, it, the automated email is ready to go out with that link, too. So <laughs> just to make sure. I have one thought. Uh-huh. Uh, that is that I, I, I'm a writer. I've written yep. books. I am zero in technology. Um, so I've been, the wheels have been turning around my head. I, I was thinking of maybe maybe getting one of my sons to, to do some of the technology, but uh, I think it's a great, great idea for getting things out there that you think that other Christians may need to be hearing. I'm just right. speaking of the Christian faith. Um, I don't want to get involved in what, what exactly I'm thinking about, but but there are some things as we as we go toward and maybe enter the end time that I think are very important. And a lot of Christians really need um, to be I'm taking second thoughts uh, about some of the, some of some of the uh, false prophecy that they've been hearing and, and accepting. Uh, so this is where I am right now. I just need to find somebody else who can do some of the technology. <laughs> Yeah, amen. That's not that's me. Where, yeah, that's where the the assistants come in. You know, the VAs and all right. that. They're right. trained on that. And like I said, it is that's not for everyone to start with. But if you're at the point where that's what you need, that'd be a good step to implement because that will. Yeah, I, I I kind of noted in my head that my son Mike would be perfect for that. Yeah, uh, amen. He is retired and he's not. He's he's young, but he's yeah. a retired EMT. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um and his wife that also does not i don't think she works at all maybe she does some but they do have time and uh mike is very good at technology i, I think maybe this I, maybe i should talk about it to him yeah yeah amen amen uh cindy said can i recommend a virtual assistance agency in the philippines i can i'm not going to do it on the call you know i can i can email you uh 
if anyone else is interested in it, just email me and uh, let me know. Uh, I can send you the one that I use because uh, I, I enjoy them. I've referred a couple of people to them and uh, I've gotten nothing but praise back uh, on the work that they're doing. And, and, uh, and matter of fact, Desiree is my primary virtual assistant. And she asked who I'm using in the Philippines because she has some things she's delegating out. <laughs> so, and she was, they're awesome. They're great. You know, so, so, but I have them doing different projects. I don't, I don't put all the eggs in one basket. I, that's why I, like, I got three working for me right now. And I'm training Alyssa uh, to help me out as well. So that's, and she's going to be handling loading it to the podcast hosting sites. So this is a, I'm, I'm, Finally, becoming the owner and not just the boss. Amen. So, amen. So, anybody else have any questions? All right, Sean, you got anything to wrap up with before we say goodbye? No, just want to thank you for uh, creating this presentation. And I think that it's really been powerful uh, for those here, kind of speaking for them. But you know, you know, being in the business as long as I've been and really seeing behind your business for so long, I feel like you have made just an absolutely incredible breakthrough with these simple things that you shared today and you're real transparent about it. And it sounds like, you know, not only is this something that you've done for years on one level, but you've amplified it now in the last six weeks. But what's amazing is that you've simplified it such that you can, you could teach these folks and it sounds like that's what you're going to do in these future workshops right. is is yeah. teach these individual specific components so that folks don't have to figure it out the way that you've had to figure it out over the years yeah. but that they're able to just run with it so that that's really exciting to me uh for me and for you bob yep amen amen uh john david john david if you can uh on mute you can go ahead and ask your question right now john david had a question Oh, yep. Uh, there you are. It's early where you're at, brother. <laughs> I don't really have a question. Okay. I just wanted to tell you that uh, I cannot use the chat, in fact, uh, because it shows in the chat, uh, it displays chat di disabled. But uh, it's not very important since. Uh, I I have your link to your book uh, and, and everything is perfect. Okay, let's see if I can. Maybe I had it disabled. I don't know. Let's, uh, let's try it now. I think I got it open now. As I said, I'm still learning. You know, I don't claim to know it all, and I'm I'm still learning processes myself. You know, but uh, but I appreciate that, John David, and I appreciate you getting up early to join us too, and. Uh, if you couldn't tell, John Davis from France, and it's, it's, you know, well, I guess it's afternoon over there now, not not morning. That's right. I, I was going backwards, so it's it's over there dinner time now. That's right. Praise the Lord. So, all right. Anybody else have anything before we stop the recording? All right. Praise the Lord. I say, if you have any questions, be sure to email me, uh, Bob at podcastersforchrist.com, and I'll be happy to to answer them.